Welcome back to another video, but this time, of course, I come to you from the year 2022. We've made it over that new year hump, and here we are in the newest of new years. And of course, it's Utah Tuesday. Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every week, each and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. This week, of course, is no different. It's the first video of 2022. So I want to talk to you about something which I think has made me a better photographer, and I think is an exercise that we can all do to help with the way we think about photographs, with the, the kind of photography brain, the thinking side of photography. And that is editing photos, but not just editing photos, doing multiple different edits of the same photo. Now, what do I mean specifically by this and why do I think that this makes you a better photographer? Well, let's start off with the what do I mean exactly by this part. What I mean is taking a photo out and about, a landscape, a portrait, whatever it might be, and when you get home and you pop it into Lightroom, do your normal edit, right? Whether that's a kind of very natural looking, just a bit of contrast, a bit of highlight, a bit of shadow, stuff like that but otherwise it looks like it's done on the camera, whether it's a full color grade, whatever it might be, do your normal editing process and then right click, create virtual copy and do a completely different edit on the second one. Maybe go black and white, maybe do some very extreme high contrast, low saturation color grade. Then right click, create virtual copy and do another edit again completely different maybe suck out all of the blues so you just have a very kind of one tone kind of color grade to it maybe do something like that maybe go for a much cooler look or a warmer look to things play around with the calibration play around with the hue saturation lumens absolutely go for a, a raising of the black level to make it a faded kind of look a film look if you like so then right click create virtual copy now you want to edit with pretty much just local adjustments so not with your global adjustments to your photos so i mean using radial filters graduated filters using the adjustment brush all that kind of stuff make your subject pop like you've seen in videos on one of your favorite channels park cameras or all manner of things that you can do there. Do another virtual copy of the same photo. Try another completely different style, this time maybe very cinematic, maybe very heavy contrast, but with a very specific orange and teal color grade. You know, imitate someone you've seen off Instagram. Essentially, have four or five different copies of the same photo that all look completely different. Now, why are we gonna do this? Well, two reasons. It gets you out of your comfort zone when it comes to photo editing and it's ultimately going to make you a better photo editor and a better photographer. You see, if you can edit your photos in all these different ways, even if you don't like them, even if you don't want to edit them that way, you have picked up new skills and new ways of looking at these photographs even without realizing it. This is why some of our videos we have on this channel where I edit maybe a landscape and I pop all these crazy clouds and lights and all this kind of stuff, and I say in every single one, this is probably further than I would ever actually take it. But doing this exercise allows me to learn skills and think about photos differently, learn something about how I might want to take the photo in future. For example, I always shoot in RAW. I always shoot in RAW and I choose whether I want it to be in black and white when I come to edit. Now that's not necessarily the best way to do it, but it's not necessarily the worst way either. It all comes down to personal preference. But when I'm taking the photo now, because I've done this kind of exercise a number of times where I'll edit a photo in lots of different ways, I think about that end product. I think about what I want the overall kind of end photo to look like because I'm the kind of photographer who is always going to do a little bit of editing, a little bit of touching up here and there, a little bit of changing this or changing colors or whatever it might be. So I'll think about whether it's going to be in color or black and white. Now I'll shoot in raw so I've got the option later. But for example, this photo, I knew straight away as I was taking the photo, this is going to be in black and white. And the reason for that is it's harsh sunlight. I don't like the colors that are around the sea didn't look very good, to be honest, like the, the color of the sea. I don't like kind of the harshness of the, of the sun kind of almost washing out some of these colors. So I'm going to lean into the high contrast. I'm going to go black and white. I'm going to make it very contrasty, very kind of high clarity. I want it to be all about this woman who's looking out into the sea. I'm going to use probably a radial gradient or at this point, I'm probably going to use select subject in Lightroom to make my subject pop, to make it darker all around her because I want it to be all about the ice isolation of her looking out to sea. And from the moment I took it, I never intended for that photo to be in color, but I only knew that 
because I'd kind of push myself with different editing styles. You know, when I look at a landscape, I might think, okay, that light looks amazing, but the sky is very boring or dull or just does not match with the rest of the landscape. It doesn't look good. But if I've done a bunch of editing, including, you know, a bunch of videos we've done where we've replaced the sky, I know that I can change out parts of the sky. Now, something that's interesting about doing something like that is learning how to replace the sky, learning when and, and, and what to replace it with doesn't mean always popping an amazing, glorious sunset on every landscape, but it does mean that you've picked up the skills to be able to do that sort of thing, and you can change parts of the sky. So for example, when I take photos like these ones, and I've accidentally blown out the sky. So because of what I do for a job, a lot of the time I have to shoot in JPEG if it's a new camera because the raw codecs are not in Lightroom and stuff like that. So I'll have to shoot in JPEG, which means blowing out the sky becomes more of a realistic thing that can happen. Well, if I blow out the sky, that's gone. That's just a white sky now. But if I can replace part of that sky and just dot in a couple of clouds, here and there, but I take out all the blues, so it's just a nice white sky, but there's a bit of detail there with clouds. Well, suddenly that's not a blown out sky anymore. Suddenly there's some detail there and I can actually kind of pass that off. You don't really look at it. You don't really notice it. It's not distracting, but it now doesn't look like a blown out sky. And I've only learned that from going way over the top editing photos where I'm replacing the sky and all that kind of stuff. If you push yourself all the way past your line where you're comfortable, right out there. You can learn all these interesting skills, you can learn all these different things that you can do, which you can then apply 25% of that, 30% of that, something that you're comfortable with, which can really help with your photo. And if you do that enough, if you push yourself with the edit enough, you can start thinking about that when you're actually taking the photos. So whether that just comes down to exposing for the highlights, but knowing that you can pull up all those shadows, get all that detail back, whether it is something where you, you're happy to blow out the sky because you can pop a little bit of detail in there at a later point when you're editing the photo. So it doesn't matter so much. You'd rather have your subject exposed correctly, but a slightly blown out sky. Whether it is learning a color grade that really works for you. So then when you're going to take a photo, you know, okay, I'm gonna pull out all the blues anyway. So it doesn't matter whether the sky, whether I'm getting lots of blue there or whether I'm not, because I'm gonna pull that out and have a nice white sky. So I've got kind of a, a gray and white with the clouds and stuff like that, but no blue. All these things add up and they're in your photography brain then when you're going to compose the photo. What does matter to you and what doesn't? Light and composition are always gonna be super important, but how much color do you need to include? How much uh, framing do you need to include? What's important in your photo based on how you edit. And you can decide that and it can change the way that you take photos. Not to mention the fact that obviously it makes you a better photo editor as well, which is an important part of photography. Now, some of us obviously like to do things pretty much straight out of camera. Uh, personally, that's not for me. I like editing my photos. That's my favorite part, actually. I love editing photos, but I have an enormous amount of respect for people who want to get it perfect in camera and just leave it always like that. That's awesome. But for me, becoming a better photo editor allows me a huge number of kind of opportunities and, and just ways to finish my photo, to get the finished product the way I want it to be. And whether you do edit your photos like that, or whether you do pull them all the way back and you do so 10, 15, 20% of the skills you've learned by pushing yourself, I think you'll be a better photographer. I think you'll be a better photo editor. And I think overall, the final images, the final photos that you take will be better for having pushed yourself earlier and learned all these amazing things. Now, I'd love to hear your opinions on this. Let me know in the comments if this is something you've ever tried before, if this is something you've ever done. And if you did, how did it work out? How do you get on? Did you find stuff that you, you didn't realize you really liked? Did you in fact confirm to yourself, do you know what? I hate this photo editing stuff. I hate taking it too far or whatever it might be. I'd love to know all down in the comments or is this something you're gonna try out now? I'd love to hear about that as well. Of course, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. I will of course see you in the next video, but until then, as always, thanks for watching.